long-term secretion never stopped. So why were those results so much better? Because they published previously on this and uh, uh, have found between 30 and 40 percent uh, success only, that is 60 to 70 percent failure rate in this group. And they think that their success rate now is, is because of better selection of patients uh, and most of the patients stayed on uh, suppressive antibiotics. So it is possible to retain the prosthesis but in very specific situations where you're treating an acute infection acutely, not an acute infection with delayed diagnosis which is what we often see. You know the organism and the implants are, uh, are well fixed and functional. Uh, and it's recommended to debride, change liners, uh, rifampicin, and then use a biofilm active antibody, rifampicin, a fusic acid, or a fluoroquinolone for six months at least. Um, and then you could, can expect 89% success with staph uh, at 12 months and a little less with a brand new one. Uh, Dan looked at the two stage revision um, at, their, at their institution over the same period of time. There were two, 330 hips, so quite a few more. Um, uh, treated in two stages, and that's a 12 week antibiotic treatment uh, using antibiotic spaces in the interim. Uh, not all with cross flat, but uh, antibiotic spaces similar to IUV, rods, a lot of different things. Reinfection rate after re implantation at a median of 3.4 years, all comers 8.2%. So that's a pretty good low reinfection rate. Um, 74% of the reinfections were different or additional uh, organisms, suggesting it's a host factor. Uh, and the other interesting thing was there was no change in the rates of reinfection over the last 25 years. In other words, they, they looked at this 25 years ago and it hasn't changed. And that's probably disappointing, but um, still pretty low reinfection rate. Uh, so you can expect uh, reinfection rates of around 10% in the long term and there's a lot of publications to support that. The problem with the mechanical loosening was quite high with cemented components, at least 14% um, and uh, with proximally only, proximal only uncemented uh, implants, also a high um, loosening rate in the revisions. Um, there's several publications now uh, suggesting that the mechanical loosening rate is actually quite low. Uh, and uh, Masri um, from Vancouver has reported on a 0% loosening rate of four years using the, the types of implants we're using for revision hip replacement. <coughs> With total knee replacements, that's a really complicated little table which is intended not to be read. Um, but essentially, the re, the um, Two-stage revision using antibiotic um, uh, uh, cement um, uh, has a uh, 88 in all series, 88 to 96 percent uh, uh, success rate of curing the infection. With a in all studies, with a follow-up more than three years, and these are contemporary publications. Um, I think we've run out of time, but I'm just going to report the results that we we've, we've had. Um, with uh, a two-stage protocol being applied to all um, uh, all uh, uh, chronic and subacute uh, infections, and it's pretty simple, really. With the sort of things we've been talking about, I had actually no real infection um, at a minimum of two-year follow-up. Now it's only a matter of time till we do get do get one failure, but the success rate can be pretty high. There are there any questions on that? Yeah. Um, uh, I, there's no, there's no evidence on that. I just don't have any, any, anything on. This is for a hip heard of this case. And uh, um, uh, the first postulates uh, were, um, and this came out of Salt Lake City. They were in knee replacements. They were taking femoral components and and them. Um, 
uh, and then re-inflaming them with a new polyethylene. Um, So that was 15 years ago. So it had been done before in me, um, but it's not flash sterilizing, it's sort of a full sterilizing process it goes through. It doesn't, uh, you could argue that it might be helpful, but there are just better ways of doing it, that's all. Um, I, I, I haven't read anything recently about it, and the only thing I'm aware of is when these and stuff like this. Oh, Aaron, Aaron Hoffman did this. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Sounds like a good idea, but there's not a lot to support it. Oh, yeah, okay. How many washouts is recommended? There's no rule on that. Um, uh, the um, in practice, uh, if you don't have an organism before you start, um, you're talking about acute infections, because this really, I think the concept of watch out really only applies to acute infections, which is, uh, which is what I'm trying to say is a very small percentage of what we're dealing with. Um, and um, at the time of the first uh, trip to the operating room, you probably don't have an organism. Uh, so you really should uh, concentrate on getting an organism um, and then starting on the um, uh, having the COVID antibiotic by the time of the second. Whether you do anything, and, and the washout probably isn't enough, you should be doing a surgical debridement as well. Time <coughs> of the second closure, by the time of the second closure, you're hopefully on your right antibiotic. Um, third one is the um, choice. And I don't, I'm not aware of any studies of one versus two versus three. Do you always close in the corner and flush out? Uh, no. For, um, no, actually. Uh, I've started using back dressings, at least for the chronic and subacute. Going back 48 hours later. I don't think you should delay more than 48 hours between the brightening. Protocol and debridements in washouts if you're doing more than. Um, how do you know when to stop? Well, that's a good question. I don't know. Um, uh, what I do know, um, when I worked in the States, we would often debride patients three, four, five times. And the um, what seemed logical at the time was. Uh, we would do quantitative cultures at each uh, debridement and it wasn't until the number of colonies got down below a certain level that we would stop doing debridement. But what you found was that as time went by, the organism changed. And you'd finish up growing different organisms by the time you were doing four and five debridements. Um, so I, um, I debride at least once, often twice, uh, always re-debride if there's a sinus. Um, or if there's abscess cavities um, or sequestry, because um, you can sure that you've got um, all the necrotic tissue. And I think you've got it um, to bride until you're happy you've got a nice vascular bed. Because what you're trying to do is to provide an environment where the antibiotic, uh, antibiotics can do their job. So you want to identify the organism and then provide an environment where the antibiotics can do their job. Okay. 